So aside from rainbows, something else neat that you might see actually around either the, the moon or the sun is something called a halo. And uh, it will be characteristically 22 degrees from the edge of the solar disk or the moon. And in order to kind of judge 22 degrees, we're going to have another 22 degree um, optical phenomenon coming up. If you extend your arm and that your palm is about 10 degrees. So about two of your palms, and that'll give you 20. So that'll give you about uh, pushing 22 degrees. So halos, they're generally whitish, and there is a space between um, either the moon or the sun and this halo. And sometimes there's a secondary halo out about 46 degrees. Uh, what causes halos, either around the sun or the moon, actually is the presence of ice crystals. And these ice crystals then would have formed in these flat upper level clouds, either the cirrostratus clouds or the cirrus clouds. Um, wispy clouds. So these are, um, th these are the ice crystals uh, that would be typically causing this refraction. It's a type of, of uh, redirecting the light, creating this halo. So here is a picture of a halo around the sun. So can, can you see it right there? 22 degrees. And this is a picture of a halo around the moon, and it's kind of fainter. It's right here. I don't know if you can see it. And again, what's causing it is these upper-level uh, clouds that have these ice crystals in them. Um, another cool thing you might see in the atmosphere is something called a sun dog. And like a, uh, excuse me, like a halo, sun dogs also need um, ice crystals. Now, you have a homework question. I think it might be question number, oh, I can't remember. It's like three questions that ask you about these optical phenomenon. They ask you uh, what they look like, um, what causes them, and what time of day. Are there any constraints on the time of day to see them? And actually, sun dogs are kind of like um, when we talked about rainbows, that you only see sun dogs when the sun is relatively low in the horizon. And so that means uh, the sunrise or sunset. And you need to have these wispy clouds, these um, cirrostratus or the cirrus clouds that have these ice crystals. And again, where will you see them? Well, sometimes you see a pair of them on about uh, 22 degrees from the sun on either side. Sometimes you'll just see one. Okay, And sometimes uh, they kind of appear as these what we call mini rainbows. There's a little bit of kind of um, uh, spreading of the light. We'll see here in a minute. So these are sun dogs. Aren't that beautiful? There's a sun dog over here, and there's a sun dog over here, and you can almost see, you know, where they arch up here. So again, the sun needs to be low on the horizon, and you have the, these wispy high-level clouds. And um, as we talk more about predicting the weather, or actually I should say as we talk more about um, incoming fronts, a lot of times when you have a front coming in, you'll get um, uh, these cirrus or cirrostratus clouds followed by the altostratus clouds followed by the stratus clouds. So that's kind of a precursor to maybe some sort of precipitation. Sun dogs are cool. One more thing before I leave this is you, can you kind of see the color? a little bit of kind of orangish on the inside. That's why they call them mini rainbows. They're kind of like rainbows on the side. They are gorgeous. Uh, another optical thing you might see, something called a sun pillar. And again, what causes a sun pillar? Ice crystals. Okay, another uh, thing is that the sun needs to be relatively low on the horizon in order for those sun crystals to make this sun pillar. And what it looks like is, um, and if this is the solar disk, you can actually can extend above and below. And this is the horizon, of course. And it's basically light being, um, well, it says that, that light, that sunlight is being reflected, not refracted, by falling ice crystals. Um, so let me go ahead and show you. Again, it can be above and below the solar disk. So here is 
kind of looked at this before. I'm kind of thinking this is your solar disk. And you kind of see um, the column above and the column below. Sun pillar, very pretty. And again, what creates this would be those wispy high-level clouds with ice. Then we move on to something called a glory. And, and uh, from what I've read and what your author says, too, a good place to be viewing this glory is from an airplane. And um, kind of a similar phenomenon to what creates a rainbow is happening within liquid water droplets. Um, so I don't know if you can kind of see, it's like a circular rainbow that's happening down in the clouds. And the sun must be at the back and you can kind of see the, the shadow of the plane. So those are glories. So what um, happened within a rainbow? Well, the physics involve both refraction, uh, refraction, reflection, and then refraction again. Um, corona. So I guess going back to the previous slide, if I were to ask you, you know, what causes a glory, uh, you would say it's suspended liquid water, suspended mist down here, it says liquid water. Similarly, coronas also require the presence of um, water droplets, okay? So a corona will, can be associated with either the sun or the moon, and this says that the moon is even a little bit more common to have a corona than the sun, and it's, you're going to see this um, sort of uh, whitish thing with a little bit of color to them, just a little bit of color to them. Um, it'll have to touch either the moon or the sun. And what causes corona is a little bit different than halos. It's liquid water droplets. So these would be maybe our mid-level uh, flat clouds, our alto stratus clouds, most likely to give us these corona. Um, all right, and so can you kind of see the solar disk here and kind of see the little bit of the, that would be your corona. That's kind of cool too. So all of these, uh, you know, pictures of corona, a sun pillar, sun dog, oh man, that'd be great. Um, a halo, those would all be fair game to include in your photo um, photo project.